Hello and welcome to your daily NBA recap for December 23rd. My name is Ace and we have 12 games to talk about in today's video. And let's take a quick look at the breakdown of today's video. We're going to have some headlines and we're going to look at yesterday's games. Um, there's not going to be any injury report. We only have one injury to report. That will be on the headlines. There is no other news. That's also all in the headlines. And there are no games today. So let's go talk about the headlines. On today's headlines, we have James Harden likely to avail to be available on Saturday following his um, that report on what had happened to him and the situation at that strip club which was determined to be recent and it determined to be a violation of the league's rules. So he's going to conduct a four-day quarantine that began on Tuesday. So he might be available to be playing on Saturday. Next article, players to lose one seventy seconds of salary, one out of 72 salary for each game missed due to a protocol violation. So basically... For every game you miss, you miss a pit, you, the part of the salary that you are owed for that day. So, he generally use, loses one, for, um, one out of 145 of his salary for each game when a player is suspended, but for a protocol violation, we pretty much just cut it in half. Interestingly enough, I, isn't that the same amount of games that are played this season? Um, I might be wrong in that. It's, it's either 70 or 72. So... Yeah, that's an interesting number to look at in terms of players missing time due to protocol violations. And finally, Cody Zeller fractures his hand in the season opener. And this, uh, the, sever the severity of the fracture is unclear. And they don't know how long he's going to be out. But it does leave time for Vernon Carey, Nick Richards to get some more time. But Bismack Biombo will likely replace Zeller as the Hornets starting center. Of course, if you know my opinion on the situation, it's that they should they should be starting PJ Washington, even if Cody Zeller's on the team. There's just no reason why Miles Burgess should be benched at this point in his career. And this is coming from someone who I, I just don't particularly like Miles Bridges. I just don't I don't like his game. I still think he should be starting. And they should be running PJ at the 5. So hopefully they can figure that out. Slide PJ to the 5. Get Miles Bridges in at the 4. It, it, also, in my opinion, Miles Bridges is only a power forward in the league. He cannot play any other position. And he should definitely be their starting power forward, in my opinion. And we got some breaking news. A Woj bomb. Clicking like and subscribe helps out the channel. You don't even need to pause the video. Just scroll down and click those buttons. Now on to the rest of the video. Now let's talk about yesterday's games. In yesterday's games, we had 12 games going on, so let's start with the Hornets versus the Cleveland Cavaliers, a 121-114 win by the Cleveland Cavaliers, 42 out of Terry Rozier and 28 out of Gordon Hayward in his NBA debut, er, in his Hornets debut in 60 minutes, LaMelo Ball had 0 points and 3 assists, going 0 for 5 from the field. On the Cavs' end, they are led by 27 by Colin Sexton and 22 from Darius Garland. Isaac Okoro's NBA debut features 11 points on 4 for 5 from the field, with 5 assists, 3 rebounds, and only 2 turnovers, while Dylan Windler makes his NBA debut with 3 points, and he shot 1 for 5 from the field. Pacers take a 121 to 107 win against the Knicks. Knicks are led by 26 from RJ Barrett and 22 from Alec Burks. Emmanuel Quickly and Obi Talvin make their NBA debuts, while the Pacers get 32 out of DeMontis Sabonis along with 13 rebounds, 5 assists. Malcolm Brockton drops 21, 8, re 8 assists, 7 rebounds, and 22 out of Victor Oladipo with 4 assists and 4 rebounds. And Nick's Obi Toppin in his debut drops 9 points, 3 for 7 from 3, I think is pretty interesting to see out of him. In a 113-107 win against the Heat, the Heat get 25 out of Bam Adebayo with 11 rebounds, 4 assists, and 7 turnovers. They begin their new starting lineup with, I guess, Jimmy at the 1, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, Mo Harkless, and Bam Adebayo with Goran Dragic on the bench, who dropped 20 and 7 assists, 
along with Kendrick Nunn on the bench. Precious Achua making his NBA debut with 8 points and 3 rebounds. On the Magic ends, we get 25 out of Evan Forney and 20 out of Aaron Gordon, 19 out of Terrence Ross, and both Cole Anthony and Tumo Keki make their NBA debuts. 6 points and 6 assists with 3 turnovers out of Cole Anthony, while 3 points and 5 rebounds, 2 assists for Tuma Okeke. I think that's how it's pronounced, I'm not too sure. Sixers take a 113-107 win over the Wizards. They get 29 and 14 out of Joel Embiid and 16 out of Ben Simmons. 19 out of Shake Milton with a team leading thir- plus 33. That's pretty crazy. Their, de- their bench won them that game for sure. While the Wizards start Isaac Bonga in the, re- in the place of Roy Hachimura and get 31 out of Brad Beal and 21 out of Russell Westbrook. 21, 15 assists and 11 rebounds. And Russell Westbrook's Wizards debut, dropping a triple-double. Denny of Dia actually has the highest plus-minus on his team with 7 points, 4 rebounds, and 1 assist. Going perfect from the field, not so perfect from the free-throw line in his NBA debut. I am now realizing I forgot to mention uh, Tyrese Maxey had 6 points, 2 rebounds, 2 assists in his NBA debut for the Philadelphia 76ers. In a 122-121 win against the Milwaukee Bucks, we get a 33-point performance out of Jalen Brown and 30 out of Jason Tatum with that game winner, and they get 19 out of Jeff Teague. Tristan Thompson is currently their starter at the center position, but I would not be surprised if we see Jeff Teague enter the starting position. Peyton Pritchard with three points in his NBA debut. Aaron Nesmith riding the bench for this game. On the Bucks end, they get 35 and 13 rebounds, seven turnovers out of Giannis Antetokounmpo. 27 out of Chris Middleton with 14 rebounds, 8 assists, 25 out of J- Drew Holiday, 6 rebounds, 3 assists, pretty clear big 3 for that team. Sam Merrill making his NBA debut, nothing too special though. A 113-99 to win over the Raptors, Pelicans do hit on a majority of their 3s, well not a majority but a good amount, 45% from the 3 point line is not something you're going to be seeing every game from this Pelicans team. So don't expect this to be a consistent thing. 24 out of B.I. with 11 assists and 9 rebounds. And 23 out of J.J. Redick going 6 for 11 from 3. Expect them to be in double-digit 3-point attempts for a whole lot of games this season because they're going to need a 3-point shooter. Seeing 0 for 0 from the 3-point line out of both Steven Adams and Zion Williamson. Knowing the current era of the NBA, it's got me worried that this team just does not have enough three-point shooting to really do anything in the playoffs, or even make the playoffs. Um, seeing four for eight from the three-point line will be probably top three in terms of Eric Bledsoe's games this season. He'll probably only have four three-pointers made for probably three or four big games this season. So seeing it night one, good sign. They get a they get a win, and Eric Bledsoe is hitting his threes. I think Bi can con- continue to shoot three for six. Lonzo Ball, maybe he can shoot 4 for 8, and JJ Reddick's definitely going to continue to hit threes on this rate, but you're not going to expect this out of EB again, and the rest of the team wasn't making those threes either. Kyra Lewis does not make his NBA debut, and the Raptors get 26-6 and six out of Pascal Siakam. Uh, Malachi Flynn technically making his NBA debut in this game as well, didn't really do anything though. The Bulls take a 104-124 loss to the Hawks. Getting 22 out of Zach Levine and 21, 7 rebounds, 4 assists out of Glory Markin with a team low, negative 34, plus minus. Patrick Williams making his NBA debut with 16, 4, and 4. And looking at the Hawks, they got 37 points, 7 assists, 6 rebounds out of Trey Young. And Sam, or Skyler Mays making his NBA debut in garbage time. Taking a look at the Spurs versus Grizzlies. The Grizzlies lose 119 to 131, even though John Morant dropped 44 and 9 assists, only one turnover. Pretty good game for him. Seeing Kyle Anderson and Grace Allen in the starting lineup for the injured Justice Winslow and Jaron Jackson. Still got some injuries going on for this Grizzlies team for sure. Desmond Bain with six points on three points, uh, two for four from three. Pretty good NBA debut, considering the Grizzlies can use more shooters. Well, the Spurs think they're playing college basketball, bringing in a four-guard lineup with 
DeJounte Murray, Lonnie Walker, Keldon Johnson, DeMar DeRozan, and LaMarcus Aldridge. All of them in double digits, scoring 28 for DeMar DeRozan with 9 assists and 9 rebounds. 21, 9 assists, 6 rebounds for DeJounte Murray, and 20 from LaMarcus Aldridge with only 3 rebounds, which is a bit surprising in my book. And looking at the next game, the Pistons take a 111-101 to loss to the Timberwolves. They, yeah, the Pistons are going to be pretty bad this season. They only shot 23% from three in this game. Dwayne Casey is just not a good enough offensive coach to even hope that this offense is going to score 105 a game. This team is going to be under 105 a game for the season, most likely. This team just cannot get anything going. Their leading score is 19 points from Josh Jackson. And we see Isaiah Stewart, Sadiq Bey, Saban Lee all on the bench for this game. Seven points from Killian Hayes and three assists, four turnovers in his NBA debut. While the Timberwolves get 23 out of Malik Beasley and 22, 11 rebounds, seven assists out of Carl Anthony Towns. Anthony Edwards in his debut is terribly inefficient at five for 12 with 15 points, four assists, four rebounds, one turnover. I do like to see that he is passing the ball and he is not turning over the ball as frequently as he usually does, but still, this is his key weakness. He's super inefficient from the field. You put pretty much any other player in his position and they're going to do the same thing. They're going to do probably better, honestly. So, the, he still needs to show something in terms of his scoring because he's supposed to be in this league as a scorer, and I'm still going to have my doubts about him despite, you know, how many people are optimistic about him. In a 124-122 win against the Nuggets, they get a game winner, the Kings, out of Buddy Heald of 22 points, 21 and 7 assists from De'Aaron Fox, 21, 9 rebounds, 5 assists from um, Harrison Barnes, Tyrese Halliburton's NBA debut includes 12 points, 4 assists, 3 for 7 from the field, 2 for 5 from 3. The Nuggets get 29, 14 assists, and 15 rebounds on a out of Nikola Jokic and 24 out of Michael Porter Jr. Facundo Campazzo officially making his NBA debut with three points. And we see Zeke Naji, Bobol, and RJ Hampton all on the bench. And I guess Marcus Howard, all their rookies are still on the bench for the team. For the Jazz, taking a 120 to 100 win against the Trailblazers, they did a really good job on the defensive end. Never really letting Damian Lillard get going. Getting 20 out of Rudy Gobert and 20 out of Don Mitchell. Tack on 17 rebounds for Rudy Gobert as well. And Yudoka Azubike, Elijah Hughes both making their NBA debuts in garbage time. While the Trailblazers get 23 out of CJ McCollum. And only 9 points out of Damian Lillard on 12 shot attempts. That's not something you're going to see a whole lot this NBA season. TJ Alibi and... This guy Blovins make their NBA debuts. And finally, the Mavs versus the Suns. Suns take a 106 102 win. Super late at night. 32 out of Luka Doncic. 0 for 6 from the three point line. The suit dropping 32 is still, <laughs> that's still a good defensive performance by Mikhail Bridges. And Luka Doncic just never really got it going from three. Went 11 for 26 from the field. 10 for 12 from the free throw line with 8 rebounds and 5 assists for the Sun and Josh Green does make his NBA debut. The Suns get 22 out of Devin Booker and 18 out of Mikhail Bridges shooting 4 for 7 from 3 and they get a lot of comp- contributions off the bench while Chris Paul, Jay Crowder and DeAndre Ayton were struggling on this game while that guy Jalen Smith comes in for some <laughs> some uh, foul trouble players. Damian, uh, Damian Jones, who had five fouls pretty quickly, and um, he played eight minutes, had five fouls, and of course, DeAndre Ayton had four fouls pretty quickly, so we got to see a little bit of Jalen Smith, which is fun for us Suns fans. Four points, three rebounds in his official NBA debut. Hey, thanks for watching until the end of the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you stuck around until the end. And I'll see you in on the 26th, I believe. Goodbye.